Welcome to the Tuesday edition of Wine's World. Well, I'm not going to do any cooking today. I haven't been very adventurous. <laughs> In fact, over the weekend, I've been trying to clear out my freezer. And um, I suppose my attempts at using up things that are hanging around could be interesting, but I didn't make anything very elaborate. I made a cottage pie with a lot of vegetables that I had stored in the freezer and some pork. Not particularly interesting. What I want to talk about today is the way in which YouTube assesses the popularity of its videos and the ways in which you can and can't act to increase your viewership. <laughs> you know, I've been posting on YouTube for about a year and I can't get anywhere with my viewers. It stays the same. When I started blogs, particularly my most popular blog, Book of Days Tales, it took about a year for it to really take off and now I've had well over a million hits which is not you know, viral, it's not brilliant but at least it shows that somebody's paying attention nothing's happening with my YouTube channel and one of the reasons is that there's no way to use search engine optimization because my channel does not really have a URL as such as my blogs do and so I can optimize searches on Google and Bing and so forth. That's one problem. The other problem is that YouTube employs algorithms that determine what is trending, what is most popular and apparently even YouTube does not fully comprehend how the algorithm works because it's uh, an AI algorithm that me and it, it 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 was set in motion and it now um, goes through various permutations that the creators don't even know about or understand but it does seem that um, that YouTube keeps track of things like the the amount of time that people spend watching your videos and as that increases then you get um, more, more um, visibility uh, in other people's feeds and, and so on. So that, for example, you should make a video that's at least 10 minutes long because then one viewer watching for 10 minutes is better than uh, seven viewers watching a video for, for one minute. So, like, length is important. But what I'm interested in now is what I see coming into my feed when I go onto YouTube and what they are thinking I want. <laughs> and this gets back to algorithms and also to privacy and data mining and so forth. And my immediate conclusion is that they're useless. <laughs> so uh, let's let's get into that. Now the reason immediately that I think the algorithms are useless is that it, it, it's clear that they follow what I click on in YouTube or in Google or whatever 
but they don't seem to have a clear idea of where I live or even what languages I speak. I'll get uh, um, routinely on, um, on YouTube, I'll get um, advertisements come on in Thai. I can't speak any Thai. I, I, you know, I can speak Khmer fairly well, um, but I don't know anything about Thai. Um, I get offers for uh, traveling to places I've already been. And I've, one of the things I don't do because I don't have enough time and money is I don't revisit places very often. So offering me a trip to Nepal, for example, isn't going to work because I went there two years ago and spent a lot of time there. Also, offering me flights from the United States is it, not going to work. I haven't lived in the United States for 10 years. Offering me um, you know, hotels in the United States is also not going to work because I don't want to visit the United States. I lived there for 35 years. It's quite enough. So, all in all, if I were to actually like survey all of the advertisements that are that are blasted at me on YouTube or Facebook or um, Google or whatever, I would conservatively estimate that one percent at most are relevant to me <laughs> and actually I'm not going to click on any of them regardless because I don't spend money. I'm, I'm a real Scrooge. I, I spend very little money but I don't even I mean I don't even watch the ads. I skip them as soon as I can because I'm not interested in being pressured into buying things but the so-called you know, like algorithmic targeting of me is useless. Now when it comes to data mining, which is very common of course on the internet, there are really two issues. One of them is collecting the data and the other is analyzing the data. Now they can collect all the data they want and it's not going to have much impact unless they analyze it correctly. And as far as I can tell, the algorithms that the major companies like Google and YouTube and Facebook and whatnot, the algorithms that they use, as far as I can see, at least anecdotally in terms of myself, they're completely useless. And there's an important point here. There's a difference between with humans your knowledge base <laughs> and your intellectual ability and they're not the same. I, I see countless so-called IQ tests on let's say Facebook in which they're testing general knowledge. General knowledge has nothing to do with intelligence. You can know all kinds of things and still be as dumb as a sack of rocks. And on the other hand, you can be extraordinarily intelligent, but not know very much. And the, like, the critical juncture is to have both, to have a lot of knowledge and a lot of intellectual ability, and to put them together. But just knowing stuff, it doesn't help anything. I mean, let's just take something simple. Um, we know that Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas in 1492. Okay, so maybe that's part of your knowledge base. So what? What do you do knowing that? What do you do knowing the dates of important battles in, in your country's history or uh, the names of all the presidents. So what does it matter? It doesn't, it doesn't do anything by itself. You have to process that information and that's 
intellectual capacity, not the database. So, as far as I can tell, the various you know, big uh, internet companies are storing lots of information, but they're not doing a very good job of processing it. And that's why I'm getting these offers to sell my property in Dubai or to buy stone crushers from China. I mean, they're, they're, they're completely useless at processing my information. Now, one could say, and this would be rather narcissistic of me, one could say that I'm unique. <laughs> I, am, I am so different from the rest of the world that their algorithms don't know how to process me. Uh, I mean, that's, that's very um, immodest of me, but, and, and I just think not true. I, I, what I think is happening is that the algorithms are creating stereotypical people and they're saying, okay, if this person clicks on this kind of stuff a lot, then it's this kind of person and will target this kind of advertisement to that kind of person. And that's just not very smart, uh, you know, to stereotype people. And so it's not just that I can't be stereotyped. I don't think anyone can really be stereotyped. There's no telling when somebody will decide, oh, that pink umbrella looks really nice. I'll buy that. <laughs> I mean, like, there are all kinds of things at stake that are not rational. So as far as I'm concerned, data mining is, a, is, is fine. You know, do it all you like because it's, it's not going to influence anything that I do. Where the algorithms are causing problems for me, and I don't know quite how to resolve them right now, is that sometimes they block me for unknown reasons. A month ago, Skype decided to block me from making personal calls. It didn't really explain, it just said, you, you are currently blocked and I was blocked for a week and I complained and nobody responded uh, partly because I think nobody was actually paying attention and then for some reason or other then the block went away and right now my um, my page that um, uh, supports my blog on Facebook is blocked I can't I can't post on it and I haven't been able to post for three days and all I get is a message that says uh, you have been forbidden from posting too often um, because we are afraid of spam. If you think this is wrong, send us a message. <laughs> and that's been going on for three days. And I've been sending 10 messages a day for three days. saying, stop blocking me. I'm just trying to get my posts up. I post about four um, different things a day and have done for seven years so for the last seven years nobody's complained but s something got triggered in an algorithm or an algorithm got changed somehow and so now I'm blocked and I'm assuming that at some point the block will go away so the algorithms that govern popularity of YouTube videos are really difficult to comprehend and I don't really know what to do. I mean I've looked at, I look at um, my feed and it tends to follow certain paths. That is, for example, I have been interested for a while in why people are flat earthers, uh, why people uh, follow Scientology, um, Jehovah's Witness and other like cult-like phenomena and so my feed gets loaded with these channels mostly um, like debunking the various claims of Jehovah's Witness and Scientologists or debunking Flat Earth recently I've, I've no, noticed a, um, a, a set of channels on um, body image, body positivity, dieting, and aversion to dieting. And the thing is that once I click on one or two of them, then I got bombarded with them. 
And I have to say that I, I really don't understand the popularity of these channels. Although I have an inkling. I mean, I, I understand, for example, particularly with dieting, because I know that an awful lot of people are worried about their weight, how they look, um, and so on. And many, many people try to diet and fail to lose weight, or they lose weight briefly and then gain it all back. So that they're concerned about at least tapping into a community of people who can help them with that. Flat Earth, I, I just don't understand it. There, I, I know of about five or six channels that oppose the Flat Earth. And I, you know, I also know of a few that, that support it. But it seems like such a gigantic waste of time because Flat Earth theories are just so obviously ill-informed that they don't know anything about physics. They claim they do. They claim they know something about science and they just don't. And there are about four or five things that you could do to demonstrate that flat earth theories are stupid and leave it at that. But they just go on and on and on and the posts get hundreds of thousands of views. I, I don't understand why. They just fail to understand. With the cult-like phenomena, I also understand a little bit because I can imagine what it's like if you've been in Scientology or you're in Scientology now but worried about it and trying to get out um, but can't for some reason or other or a Jehovah's Witness or whatever. And it is, it is helpful if you can see somebody talking about their own struggles and how they got out and what they had to put up with. You know, that, that, I mean, I can see how certain communities can form in that regard as well. But I also understand that a lot depends on simple things like uh, production values <laughs> and um, the age of the person uh, producing the video and the antics that they get up to. That an old guy like me sitting on a couch talking to a camera is not going to get a lot of views because people just get um, attracted by uh, people eating a lot <laughs> or, or dancing a lot or, or making faces or, or just having high cartoon or production values. And I, I find that just sad, I guess, that, that intellectual content is less important than the bells and whistles that, that attract people. So it's just like any form of advertising, that if you have a guy in a white coat speaking to a camera about the benefits of a particular medicine, it's not going to it's not going to attract a lot of people particularly a lot of young people but if you have cartoon characters dancing across the screen with a happy jingle and and so on then then you might get um, more takers so i'm not sure i have any particular conclusions at this point just just a concern that I, so I'm, not, I'm not concerned that social media are somehow corrupting the culture. I don't, I don't think that's true. Um, it's just changing the way people are being. <laughs> uh, I don't know what, what the best word is. Like, I, don't, uh, um, I don't think the media are making people any more stupid. I think they just are. Stupid. I know sounds that sounds really uh, coarse and abrupt, but I don't think it's going to change much. Just as there are a lot of people who are convinced of things that are false, like the flat Earth, for example, and they're not going to be changed. And so there's no point in debating because they've got their minds made up. And 
in as much as YouTube is just like pure entertainment well then obviously people mugging to the camera and eating thousands and thousands of calories at one go they're going to get a lot of views and people like me sitting on a couch and trying to be intelligent are not that's the world we live in I will be back to my general philosophizing on Friday meanwhile please like please subscribe and have a good week